Luke, Tom, and Nathan here with catsandcarb.com and today we're catching, cleaning, and cooking trout. All right guys, you ready to go fishing? Yeah. Woo! All right, let's do this thing. My three-year-old boy, Nathan, had never caught a rainbow trout before, and my niece, Lucy, hadn't either for that matter. So I took him to Skyline Trout Farms in Sperryville, Virginia, a little uh, Pay Lake type uh, situation where we could hopefully get them a chance to catch their first trout. It was a beautiful drive. We had a great time. This is a lovely little place. I'm going to put a link in the description. It's a great place to take kids, very small little pond. There's no entrance fee. You just pay per pound for the fish you catch, and they have fishing gear and tackle and bait that you can buy or rent. So we've got our bucket with our bait and some hooks, and we've got our net. We've got a bunch of crazy children, and it is a beautiful Saturday. So we're going to see if we can't catch some uh, some trout here and cook them up. Hey, okay, hey guys, why don't you, Nathan, why don't you follow me? Oh, nice boat, nice fish. Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> hey, Dad. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, he's running space. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start rigging up, and we've got power bait and worms, which are the classic dilemma for trout fishermen which bait to use. So I'm going to start with worms because I like them a little bit better. But if that didn't work, we'll switch to power bait. We might just mix it up and put a little on one rod and a little on the other and see what works best. All right, guys, you ready? Yeah. yeah. Then you guys can go back to the car if you want to pick up some. Go hang it, Daddy. These little trout farms are a great way to get kids into fishing. I know Tommy likes them because they're smaller fish that he can actually reel in himself, and they don't have spikes like sunfish. So trout are one of his absolute favorites, and it's great in the wintertime. Some of the best trout fishing is in the winter and early spring. So when everything else is kind of slow, you can take your kids out to a trout farm, catch a lot of trout, have a great time. They need some water. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> One real nice thing about learning how to fish in a place like this is that there's lots of people around. And you get to watch what other people are doing and talk to other people and see what works and what doesn't work. And even if you don't know anything about fishing, Within a few feet of you, you got somebody who could probably help you out. People are usually pretty friendly at these sort of things, so it's a great way to learn how to fish if you've never done it before. The biggest downside to places like this is the fish get hammered all the time, so they can be quite line shy. And if you have fish that are kind of shy and don't want to bite, use smaller hooks, smaller baits. I'm using uh, number 12s and number 10s octopus hooks here. So really tiny little guys. And I'm using four pound line, six pound line. Sometimes it makes a difference when the fish are real picky. The trout really like high oxygen water, so that's often a good place to fish is near one of these little bubble makers or a place where a stream dumps in or something like that. If there's a little bit higher oxygen, odds are you're gonna find at least a few trout hanging out around that area. Look at this, Nathan, Nathan, come here, bud. Nathan, Nathan, come bite. here. Nathan, Nathan. Look at that, Nathan. Come here. Listen, you got him? Yeah. All right, you do it. Lift him up. Lift him up. Okay, let's go. Lift your rod up. Okay. Step back. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. Okay. Okay. There you go. Give him away from the water. Okay. Give him in the sunlight. Are you going to eat a fish? Yeah, we're gonna eat them. Yes! Make sure you cook them ah. very well and oh, yeah, tasty gonna... enough so I like it. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, you caught him? Yeah. Now I'm putting rocks in. Don't put rocks in the bucket. Don't put worms in the bucket. Don't put your pliers and your hands in the bucket. Oh, look at this. Hey, 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 who wants it? Hey, hey, hey. Here, let Lucy do it. Yeah, come on. Dad, get the net. Here, let, let Tommy net. Tommy, you net it. Let, 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 Lucy, 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 Lucy. Go get it, go get it, go get it. 
Oh, that's a big one. Nice. nice. Why don't you pull him back? Get him away from get him away from the water. Don't let him bump into the other gear. Hey, Lucy, is that your first rainbow trout? Yes. Oh, are you pretty glad you caught it? Yeah. What do you think? Is that a cool fish? Yeah. It's a big one. Nice, nice rainbow. Oh, do you put up a good fight? Yeah. Are you excited to eat them? Yeah. So far, I've caught all my fish on power bait. I've got a few hits on artificial pellets and earthworms, but hands down, the power bait seems to be the winner, which is exactly what the guys here told me. So, you know, that's the nice thing about these, these little pay lakes and trout farms is just talk to the owners and ask them what people are catching fish on and they'll tell you, so. All right, guys, let me show you the rods I'm using. I'm using the Field and Stream Tech Light Ultralight Rod with a Lose Mr. Trout Ultralight Reel and some four pound fluorocarbon. Over here, I've got a Fluger Reel paired up with the Ugly Stick GX2 Ultralight. It's a really popular, inexpensive, rod it's about 29 dollars for just the rod 39.99 for the rod and reel combo and i think i've already seen like two or three people out here using the same rod very popular this is the red range from drennan it's a british float rod I, it's 13 footer i like it it's just super sensitive fun to play small fish on uh, and if you get a large crappie uh rod it'd be kind of an equivalent here in the states now, i've got one of the fluger president reels on it and I've got six pound owned uh, spider wire on it. Got the water. Tommy, get back. How many rocks are in this bucket? <laughs> this trout farm is like a lot of trout farms. It's uh, keep only, you can't catch and release and you pay per pound. So we just uh, gotta weigh these suckers up, figure out how much money we owe them. More than two. Ah, uh, it does two. Oh, 3.7. 3.7. Is there if I pull the little one out just to see what the big ones weighs? Oh, sure. Yeah, just 2.36. 2.36 pounds. That's a very nice fish. That is a very nice trout indeed. Well, guys, there's a lot of different ways to clean a trout, but generally you either fillet them or you gut them. And there's lots of different ways to fillet and gut a fish. I'm going to try this fillet knife, which doesn't belong to me, and uh, see how I do. Cut right here behind the Pectal yeah, fin, four. and then get a grip on them. In this bucket right here. And then turn the knife 90 degrees once you hit the backbone, and you're just going to go along here, the belly, and along the back. You should feel the ribs. There you go, some eggs. Same thing on this side, just put the knife on the pectal fin, cut down all the way till you hit that backbone, then turn the knife 90 degrees and just go down the fish. Try to get as much of that belly meat as you can. I like the belly meat. and cut out the fence. You still end up with all of these uh, rib bones right in here. And there's two ways to do it. You can either come in with a knife and, and go and cut those out, or you can pull them out during cooking. It's really easy to get them out during cooking. There you go, all the ribs are out that way. Now there's another set of Y bones right in here, but I just pick those out while I'm eating it. Now, if you don't want to fillet a fish, if you just want to gut it, use a pair of scissors. It's really easy. Just get in there right off the anus. And just cut, 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 cut. Cut the belly open. Okay. Then you get in behind the pectoral fins, cut two through to the gills. Okay. And then just reach in there. Just grab everything. Now if you want, you can cut the head off, but if you don't want to do that, just get in there and cut in under the chin like I did there, and then cut deep as you can up into the skull there. And 
then you pull out all the gills. Then you have this bloody vein right in here along the back. Just put your thumb down in there, squish it all the way to the spine, and then just pop it out. Now that's the easy way to do it. All right, there we go. A beautifully cleaned uh, trout. Super easy with just a pair of scissors. So don't get intimidated by this. Any idiot can do it, as I just proved. Let's go put one of these gallon size Ziploc bags and get it home. There we go. Nathan, well, you're taking your pants off in front no, of women again. They I'm just told. Fell down. Yeah, that's what we keep telling you Child Protective Services. They want well, guys, I think we should go home and cook up some trout. How about that? Let's do it. All right, so now let's get started cooking these trout. I'm gonna show you two different recipes, one for the fillets and one for the whole gutted fish. So check it out. All right, this recipe is super easy and the measurements don't have to be precise. Chop up some lemons, then finally chop up some chives. Uh, then you take some fresh thyme and pull the leaves off. Add it all into a bowl. Get as much or as little as you want. Add some capers in there, a little bit of the caper juice in there with it couple teaspoons of olive oil and then squeeze a lime in there and just mix it up. And you could add other herbs in there. It's not precise. Throw it into a blender, chop it up, and then you'll have this kind of puree looking stuff. Put it in the microwave for a minute or two to let the oils from the herbs soak into the olive oil and then lay down some tin foil. Take your gutted trout, salt it lightly on the inside and salt it heavily on the outside. Remember, it's got skin and scales on it, so the salt's not gonna get all the way through that skin, so you go a little heavier on the outside. Then you spoon in most of your herbs into the gut pouch. Just pack it right in there. Once again, most of those herbs aren't gonna get into the meat, so you go heavy-handed. Add some slices of lemon in there, like so. And I should have oiled the trout before I started doing this, but you know, you can do it after the fact and uh, that's just to help it keep it from sticking to the tin foil. And then wrap that thing up in a little envelope of, uh, of aluminum foil and then you're going to want to stab a lot of holes with a, a knife into it to let the steam out. You don't want it to get too mushy. Put the oven to 350 and leave the trout in there for about 10-15 minutes. After about 10-15 minutes you're going to take it out of the oven, you're going to open up the aluminum foil, you're going to add more herbs to it, and then you're gonna set the oven to high and broil. And you're gonna leave it in for another five to 10 minutes to try to brown the skin and get a little bit firmer, crispier flavor to it. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. For the fillets, you're gonna lay down a sheet of tin foil on a cookie sheet, put them skin side down, and then you're gonna season them lightly with salt. Then you're gonna go and sprinkle some brown sugar on there. I like to go heavy handed, kind of work the brown sugar into the meat with your fingers. Then you take melted butter and just brush it on. That's all you have to do. It's really simple. It doesn't have to be tons. Then squeeze a little lime on there if you wanna get real crazy. And then you set the oven to broil at high and put it in there and watch it carefully because it'll start browning up, it can burn on you. So kind of peek in on it frequently. Leave it in for about five to 10 minutes and then you're done. You should see the meat start to brown and the butter and brown sugar start to burn a little bit on the tin foil. That's when it's done. I'm also gonna show you some other little recipes here. So take a cast iron skillet, add some olive oil to it, get it up to a medium heat, add the rest of your chopped up chives in there then add in some fresh asparagus, mix it all around, get all the asparagus covered in chives and oil, then go ahead and add some garlic salt to it to flavor, and then once the asparagus is flexible but still snaps, then it's done. Do not overcook it. You don't want it to be floppy. Fried asparagus makes a great side dish to trout. Then just wipe out your pan with a towel while it's still hot, add a little bit more olive oil, and then put a whole bunch of sliced sweet peppers with all the seeds removed. Uh, just mix them around for about three to five minutes on a medium heat, sprinkle them with salt, and just cook them till they start to blacken just a little bit. Pull those suckers out and you've got another awesome side dish. It goes very well with this trout recipe. And of course, you got the obligatory uh, garlic bread. So slice up a couple uh, bits of French bread or baguettes, 
spread some butter on there, sprinkle them with garlic salt, and then add some plucked uh, rosemary on there as well. Broil it on high for five minutes and be very careful not to set off the fire alarm. Tommy, are you trying to crawl beneath the smoke? Yes, because when I heard that, I thought there was a fire. <laughs> All right, boys, sit up, sit up, sit up. It's dinner time. Do you want some asparagus? Now, we have the trout that has lemon and er herbs on it, or you want the trout that has sugar on it? Who wants the one with sugar on it? Me. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, this is Nathan's fish oh, right here. Nathan, that's your fish, buddy. Can I go in here and just grab the skin? It has all the it? scales and everything on it. And rip it off. Yeah, it just comes right off, and the fin comes right off. Like, oh, are those bones? Yeah, can you see like the bones? Yeah. Okay, so once you got the top layer of meat removed, then what you do, Tom, is you pull this free like this, okay? Grab the head, okay, and then you just, you go like this, see? Rip all oh. the bones off. Ding! And then, ooh, Rip the see, there you go. What do you think, babe? Look, my dear, this is delicious. I especially like brown sugar one, but I, I it's like that classic. one too. It's a classic. It's a classic. I know we've tried a lot of different recipes, mm -hmm. but I always come back to that one. It's That's really good. good one. And the peppers are good. The bread is good. I love asparagus. This is delicious. Thank you. And the children won't eat it. They won't eat it. But on the bright side, Nathan got an excuse to go use the potty, and he actually did use the potty. So good for you for not urinating in your pants. Yeah. Yay, buddy. For you, buddy. All right, Tom, you like your fish skeleton? Yes. No, no keep it off mom's table. Yeah. So my sister, who hates fish, went out to Panera <laughs> Bread to avoid having to eat my cooking. But uh, we waited up for her, and uh, now we're now forcing it. her to eat it after being full. Eat it. So um, I don't like fish. Let's see how let's see how she reacts to the sure fish one. her daughter caught. It's trout. Good mm, trout. Trouty. <laughs> it has extra trouty taste in it. The hint of garbage can. That is good. That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. You're not about to throw it up or anything? No. No, <laughs> That's really good. I don't like fish. I hate it. You like it, Curtis? I really like this stuff. It's delicious. Yeah, but you have a... <laughs> that, that rosemary one was amazing. Mm. That seriously, like that, that was some of the best fish I've ever had, the rosemary. Nice. I'm a fan. All right, Calvin, eat something. <laughs> I'll put it in your ear. <laughs> eat it. Eat it. Well, guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> run away, run away. Stop.